Chapter 6, The Normal Distribution. We'll start with section 6.1, introducing normally distributed variables. A variable is said to be normally distributed if it has a bell-shaped distribution. Um, many naturally occurring variables are normally distributed. Um, and we'll use this for continuous data. So chapter 5, we may or may not remember, we used, it was mostly discrete data, right? We did discrete random variables. Um, we did the binomial distribution, which was discrete. Um, this will be more for continuous data that happens to fit a bell shape. So one example might be heights or weights of things growing in nature. That's really common for normal. Um, some standardized tests are a normal curve. And it looks something like this. So it's not a perfect bell, right? Just because of random variation, but overall it's kind of a bell shape. So we have the histogram of height, height, and then relative frequency. And it makes somewhat of a bell shape. So let's check out one of these bars to find the area. And then we'll talk about why we care about area. So I'm gonna take this bar And we're going to find the area of this bar. So it looks like the width is 1, because I go 48, 49, 50, 51, right, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. So since it's going by 1s, the width would be 1. And the height would be, every bar is different, but it's measuring the relative frequency. So if we were to call this base and height, the area of the bars will be B time H. We just decided that the base or the width is one, so it'll just be equal to the height. And the height is measuring relative frequency, um, specifically population relative frequency, because we're assuming we have all the data. And what we are just learning now is that um, this is also probability. We learned that in chapter five. So relative frequency is probability, and that is gonna be approximately equal to area under the curve, under the normal curve. So the main idea is that we can use the normal curve to find probabilities. And I'm using squiggly lines because it's approximately equal. You'll notice there's like a little bit extra up here and maybe a little here that's not counted, so it's approximate. So what do we use area under the normal curve for? Um, if a population is approximately normal, normally distributed, then population relative frequency is approximately equal to area under the normal curve. Or if we have a random variable, so that would be... Um, more of something based on chance rather than like looking at heights, then probability is also approximately equal to area under the normal curve. So basically relative frequency and probability are approximately equal to area under the normal curve. And then we're gonna have multiple versions of this normal curve. The two things we need to figure out, so the normal distributions are completely determined by two parameters, mu, the mean, and the standard deviation sigma. So we'll draw some normal curves together. So a couple properties, basic properties of a normal curve. Total area is one, and that's because we're doing 100% for probability. So the curve represents everything, so one would represent everything. Um, the curve is centered about its mean, Or mu. So that tells me that mu is right in the center, right at that peak that's right in the middle of the graph. And then it cur the curve extends indefinitely in both directions as the height approaches zero on each side. So you'll notice it gets flat. That's what I mean by the height approaching zero. And then almost all of the Area lies between three standard deviations. So that'll be mu plus three sigma on the right side and mu minus three sigma on the left side. That's the flat part when the graph starts to get flat.
And why is this familiar? Um, the empirical rule told us empirical rule told us three standard deviations was 99.7%. So that's why the curve ends around three standard deviations. So let's sketch one. And so we have mu is equal to 15, and we have standard deviation is equal to 3. And we'll label the axes. So the axes is just the number line on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and put the mean right in the middle. So right where that peak is, 15 goes in the middle. And then we just kind of, what I do is I count by sigma just three times. And again, three times because of the three standard deviations. No reason to go past three times because that's the flat part of the curve. So we'll do 15 plus 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. 21 plus 3 is 24. And we stop at three standard deviations. There's no reason to go farther because there's really not any data over there. If you wanted a shortcut formula, right, you could do 15 plus 3 times sigma. So 3 times 3, and that would immediately tell you to stop at the 24 is the flat part. So on the left side, it would be 15 minus 3 times 3, which is 6. And so that's how I know the flat part's at 6 for three standard deviations. But otherwise, we can subtract 3 on the left side. So 15 minus 3 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. 9 minus 3 is 6.